teacher are controlled by the kids. So if I have a group of five students who come up to me and say, D, could you teach us something on economics? I can say, okay. You know, and then I'll have to go find resources and to do that. But it's truly controlled by the students. Students are not required to be in anything. They have to do all of the state standards. So projects are somewhat defined by standards. But I, I, want, I don't want the standards to lead the project. I want the project to happen to meet standards. You know, and by the time they graduate, we have to make sure that they meet them all. So um, pretty creative teachers can fit a lot of standards into projects. goes to Ed Visions to cover payroll services, HR, all of the auxiliary services and stuff, and um, we're vested with it if we've paid the $100 to be a shareholder. Um, okay, so the question is, how influenced uh, or at all were you by the Sudbury Valley School? Or are you, even, are you aware of them? Or? Um, yeah. We, we looked at them, we looked at um, Waldorf schools. Um, I, I say sometimes we're a high school Montessori. Um, we looked at Dewey, we looked at the Coalition of Essential Schools. I mean, we studied just about anything that was out there. We, we, did the eight, we looked at the eight-year study that was done in the 30s, and they followed 3,000 kids for eight years and found that the more creative and bizarre the schooling was, the greater opportunities those kids had which is awesome. So, I mean, I keep on telling parents that, look it up. You know, the only reason it wasn't published is the war came and it got lost in the war. Way in the back. What do you do about food? What do I do about food? Sometimes my kids cook. Um, we, we actually have a diner in, in Lesur the next town over. And they contract us with us for lunch. So for two bucks, you can get a cheeseburger and fries or a fresh salad or, um, you know, the things that kids want to eat, uh, a homemade soup of the day. So it's pretty reasonable and we'll cover for any student who can't afford it. Um, we didn't pay to put in this kitchen. And if you look at the amount of paperwork it takes to do free and reduced lunch, it's, easy, it's actually cheaper for us to just pay for those lunches. In the back. How do you pick the student? How do you, how do you decide what student gets to go to your school? Um, we're a public school, so it's open. Whoever comes to our door, we let in. Okay. Once we're full, we put a waiting list up, and we just put the students on a waiting list. And if somebody moves out, because you can graduate at any particular time. So if somebody graduates in October, we've got an opening, we'll call the next person on the list and say, come on down. Um, our kids have to do all, all the MCA exams, which are like the exams anybody has to take. I don't really care how they do on them. Shouldn't say that. Um, a one day, one time test is really a stupid measurement of what kids do. So um, we really measure our kids on life skill rubrics. I want my kids to be able to manage their time, um, do critical thinking, think outside of the box, have goal setting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I do have to give the test, and every time I get a call from Pat Walsh at the, the St. Paul Pioneer Press, and he says, D, how come your scores are so low? I was like, guess what? We've got new kids. And um, when kids come in two years or more below reading level, um, it takes us a while to get them up, and those are the scores that, of course, they're reporting in the paper. Um, but to date, with 16 years of graduates out the door, we've only waived two kids in that entire time on the test that have not passed it on their own accord, including 40% special ed. Okay, 
um, I think, right back here. I was a little confused about, um, about talking about outsourcing right brain activities and like keeping creative activity. Um, can you talk about ed visions? Like, what do they, do they have hopes or collaborations for like, the education of students worldwide? It was the outsourcing. I, I heard that. Yeah, I was confused about your comment about outsourcing, like right brain activities and, and keeping creative activities. So I was wondering if Edvigens has any like, like hopes or um, efforts towards like the education of students, like at a more worldwide level. We will meet the needs of every student as they walk in the door, no matter where they're at, where they come from, who they are. Um, you know, if, if they're truly left brain thinkers, we're gonna try to push them into a little more creativity. And for some of our kids, it's really difficult. For our truly right brain thinkers, we still have to make sure that they have some analytical background too. So we do all of that, but what I wanna do is to truly help create these kids that, that can think outside of the box, because those are the kids who are gonna change the world. Um, because of size. You know, when we have a staff of 17, it's pretty tough to do payroll on our own. It's pretty tough to do, um, even the insurance piece is huge. So by adding that to 150 people, your insurance costs go down dramatically. Um, it also gives us a larger pool of teachers to work with. It gives us more cooperation and sharing within the co-op. Um, and we really, when we started, we wanted schools to break off and do this on their own. So there's actually, Avison has started a, a teacher's co-op here in California. And we hope more people do that. So thank you. Come visit us anytime. Grant, or Education Evolving, which is a think tank in St. Paul. Um, these are great resources. Or give me a call.